Yeah, but this this episode was um it was pretty deep. Yeah. How? It was um you know, number one, the stepmom gets on my nerves. You know, she really gets on my nerves. Right. You know, because um here's Keisha, right? She just went through something traumatic. They don't know how it has affected her, but all at the same time, the mother and the girlfriend are at this crazy pace, especially the stepmother. She's at this crazy pace to where she thinks she knows what to do. She thinks she knows what Keisha needs and all of that. You know, she 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 pushes too much. She pushes way too much. Right. And when somebody has went through some things, this is what I tell a lot of people. When a person has gone through something, give them their space. You know, you you have to wait and see how has it affected them. You know, you just can't assume how it has, has affected them. All of this, she can't walk around with all that shit sitting sitting up inside of her. Number one, you don't know what's sitting up inside of her. Of course, you know there's something there because of what happened to her, but you don't know what it is, so you don't know how to deal with it. Right. You know, she's walking around um, like she already. I don't. I don't know. I just. I just really don't like her. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. She runs uh, a lot of people the wrong way. Back off. You know. She. She's. Um. She's too masculine. You know. Her. Her whole approach is. Is. Um. Hold on. Okay, I had to um, put this other earpiece in because I, I I wasn't able to hear you. But um, her she she's too masculine and too aggressive. Right. You know, and um, she tries to be involved with the children a little bit too much. You know, and that that reveals her her you know it's it's her masculine demeanor. You know, being being a factor of her aggression and impatience, you know, Probably. trying to control things because of, of being insecure of where their marriage is. You know, she 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 needs to back off and let their mother deal with the issue more. You know, because I, I think that the mother is dealing with the issue a whole lot more better than she is. Right. You know, she she's worried about. Her mother sleeping with her. You know, I miss you, babe. I don't like sleeping by myself. I mean, excuse me. Can you give it a minute? You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's only natural that a mother is is going to respond like that, you know, because considering everything that her daughter just went through, you know, I, I totally understand, you know, why her mother is sleeping out there on the couch because she wants to be close to her daughter plus... You know, this, this this thing who she just married wanted to just pack her stuff up and just start uh, with with the grieving process. You know, she she's she's too aggressive. She moves too fast. She's too pushy. You know, she she's a, you know she she's too masculine for me. Right. You know, that's like when Keisha went in the room and and started to vacuum her room. And how the stepmother forced herself into her room instead of leaving her alone for some space, you know. When people need to be left alone, that is important to them and dangerous for others. Right. You know, then she goes over there unplugging the vacuum. You know, her mother saying that she doesn't have to talk to anyone until she's ready. And see, I get that. Give her some space. Let 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 her deal with what happened to her. And let her deal with the fact that she's back at home. She doesn't feel safe at home. She she's trying to keep herself busy doing something. Leave her alone. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Sometimes people need to be pushed, but not immediately. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, only after showing signs that that a push is 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 necessary. I mean, even even indirectly. You know. Right. And then her having Keisha's friend coming over. You know, forcing her to come over, and 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 what's and what's the first thing her friend said? I'm so glad you're not dead. 
Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, that brought me the wrong way too. How she just said it like that. And I'm, well, you know, she she wouldn't have had even been there to say it like that had the stepmother backed off, back off. You know, and then uh, when when she was um, braiding Keisha's hair, you know, you you saw how Keisha faded off into a trance. Yeah. Now you know most people may think, well, she's going crazy. She's going crazy. No, she's not going crazy. I mean, all of that is a part of her destiny. What you have to do is listen to everything that the girl who was braiding her hair was talking about. Now, even though Keisha felt as though. Um, she was interested in what that girl was talking about. Her going off into a trance, that's that's an indication of like, you know what, I have been through something. All that stuff that I used to be interested in, that stuff that stuff you talking doesn't interest me at all. Yeah, it's dead to her. Yeah, it's dead to her now. So what what she's doing is She's going, that, that, that is a sign of a revolutionary change and, and evolution concerning what she has become more important. You know, what's, 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 what has become more important than before. Right. You know, the effects of her uh, stepmother's um, interference works in favor of Keisha's healing and growth. You know, I, I I saw so much into this. You know, this pain and this this healing and and evolution. Then her brother coming out of his room at a bad time. You know, shows his immaturity. You know, I mean, she's dealing with a whole lot in that family. You know, considering everybody is was was supposed to be so overly concerned about that. You know, they're willing to take a bullet and and all of that. And then she gets home and seems like everybody else is back to normal. And it seems like she's the only one that's that's going through a process of 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 evolution, despite what happened to her. You know, right. of of course, um, she um, went through something traumatic, life changing, but all at the same time, Keisha is still able to sit up and joke and laugh with her ex boyfriend. I think I think she's doing really good. You know, I just think one one of the uh, main uh, problems right now with with Keisha is the stepmom. You know, coming in, un unplugging the the um, 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 vacuum, and um, you know, she she she's she's in their face a little bit too much. I would have to tell her to leave. You you know what? You need to leave. Right. You know, the stepmom coming out complaining about. Her, her mother sleeping on the couch and I miss you, you know. She's only concerned of herself. Yep. And then when, when uh, what's his name? Is, is his name Emmett? Yeah, Emmett, yeah. Emmett, Emmett comes over, right? Now, this stepmom is supposed to be so intelligent and wise and insightful. And then when Emmett comes over, just knocks on, um, on Keisha's door, Keisha takes him by the hand and just leads him in. Then she says, this nigga. She used to go with the dude. And why are you saying this nigga right in front of his mom? Right. You know, she, she she's out of control. And then, when you look at um, Keisha and Emmett's conversation about Lala, did you hear Keisha's insight? In, in regards to what? When she was saying, do you love her? Or maybe you should, you know, if, 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 if you tell her, there's a good chance you'll lose her forever. But if you don't tell her, this this thing will be hovering over your head like a dark cloud forever. And, and then Emmett said, well, either way, I'm, 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 I'm screwed, huh? She said, yes. And I'm listening to this. I'm like, this is, a, this is a young woman who just went through something traumatic and listened to her insight. Listen to this woman's insight. I mean, she she's got she has an insight into things. Now, now people may say, well, well, you know, that's very common insight. No, oh, man, we're talking about a young lady who was missing for two months, two whole months. 
She's being violated. She's being terrorized. She's being all types of stuff. What's 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 going on with her? But look right. at her, but but look at her demeanor. She's able to sit down and have a conversation with her ex. She's able to impart information and advice to him. She's able to have an insight. You know, and then and then when um, the stepmom was 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 talking to um, his mother, she was saying, oh, "This is supposed to be the happiest day of our life, but it's like a nightmare." You know, that shows her ignorance. You know, and 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 how life is. You know, it it goes to show you how her her ignorance of how life is a a sacred journey and therefore unpredictable. I mean, with right. with 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 all of your intelligence, don't you know this? She is just so selfish. She's so selfish. Life is unpredictable like that. Think, life is not going to be exactly the way you think it should be. You know, I mean, it's 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 this 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 um episode was um it was deep it was deep in a whole lot of ways and then here come this um um big papa with this this money issue you know with his immaturity coming in and god is good all the time oh my god I, mean, I, I knew when he said i thought about you i was like we gonna get noise by that part oh god <laughs> i know that's you well right. enough to know anytime the characters start talking about i know that's gonna be a trigger for you mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I felt somewhere by two or whatever. I'm like, here we go again with that garbage that Negroes always talk about. Give God to pray. Give God to pray. Well, you know, um, why is it just this God you're talking about allowing this kind of stuff to happen? Right. All right. What? Yeah. Why, why don't you deal with that? How 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 come Keisha can't live her destiny, um, and be shaped and formed in another way? How how come this right. had to happen to her? Why? Why is that right. the formula? Why is that the formula? And you remember, even Keisha. Remember when she was looking in the bathroom? She was talking about. She started to wonder if the reason why she, you know the way she's dressing, if she attracted that to her. I was, I was glad that they even wrote that line in the script. Mm-hmm. But normally, when women get stuff like that happening, women, women are always are straight up victims. They don't never have no accountability. But she was like, she was starting to look at herself, man. She was like, man, I'm in many ways, I'm responsible for why this happened. Absolutely. You know, and then then she's got a mother saying, even if you walking down the street butt naked, that don't give nobody. Oh, shut up, feminist! All right, yo. Let let this young lady take responsibility because she was out there dressed the way that she was dressed in order to get attention. You know. And everything that that was said at at that um, table, whenever when everybody was eating, everything at that table said was was true about her 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 um, wanting to be grown, and it wasn't nobody able to tell Keisha nothing. Right. And yeah, so she was fine. Yeah, and so when 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 she burnt her clothes as a form of personal death of who she was and the birth of who she is destined to be, I totally understand that. I, I totally get it. You know, and so with, with with her life being changed, obviously, everyone in her life, their life is going to change too. Right. You know, that's that's how everything goes in harmony. You know, it's like her, her little brother was saying, I just want everything to get back to normal. Normality is the past, bro. That's dead. Yeah. You know? You 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 can't be as closely associated with anybody if if they go through something and if they um, life changes if if you're going to be continuously associated with them your life is going to change too. Yeah, nobody exists in a vacuum. Mm-mm. You know, and and a lot of them haven't come to know how. Keisha's evolution and her revolution is 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 gonna make an impact on them. You know, this is the fullness of the journey of of everyone involved, and that's that's right. the way it is. You know, Keisha's life cannot evolve and change alone for her own good, and not everyone else. 
life being changed for their own good. That's that's just the way it works. You know, so I, I understood, you know, Keisha burning her clothes. I have to save myself. You remember when she said that? Yeah. She said, I have to save myself. Basically what she was saying, I have to save myself from myself. And therefore, who and what I used to be, she needed to know that his actions were not her fault. But it transpired for her to live her purpose. She she was not going to be who and 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 what she is des- destined to be if she would have had continued on the path she was on. You know, we come to know what is normal is but the past. That's all it is. Right. And then the homeless guy coming over to talk to her. I keep forgetting his name. Ronnie? Yeah, yeah, him. You know, I, I think they should have had a more deeper insight to, to um, hurting and healing and and the measurement of time, even though the dialogue was, was, was good because um, when he told her that um, um, you gave my life meaning, that's when that, and after that, that's when she went and burnt her clothes. I'm like, ooh, I get this episode. I get it. I don't. I don't know if a lot of people really got it, right? But I got it. I'm like, you gave my life meaning, and and you know, it's like sometimes a person's life is the light at the end of the tunnel for someone else's life who is um, in darkness. Like he was telling right. me. You you are the light. You know, it's it's like he said, you 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 were the light. You you are the light at the end of the tunnel tunnel for his life. And so when she got that, you know, she said, Well thank you. He said, No, thank you. And then that's when it hit her. She said, Oh, okay. Now I see why I went through all of this. You know, so that that episode, um, I really um, enjoyed it. It was it was it was deep. But you want to know something? Um, I like when Keisha said, um, "You remember when her mother wanted to to um, put the fire out?" Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I I was glad that she stopped her from doing that. Yeah, and Keisha said no. You know, that was Keisha's way of saying, let her die. Let her burn. You know, she said, I've learned how to save myself. I'm like, "Ooh, I love this episode. I love this episode. Yeah, it was a very powerful line when she said that. I said, because I get it. I get it. That's why um, what after really looking at this episode and, and basically studying it, because you remember when I was, um, I, I sent you to Texas um, last night? Yeah, 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 in the morning. And I was telling you that um, I wasn't sure, you know, if, if if the stepmother was correct or whatever. Right. You know, so I didn't I didn't want to speak on it um, until I had my, uh, my off days. And, you know, I, I, I looked at it last night when I got home. And then when I got up, I looked at it again. You know, because last night I was tired, and you right. and you don't conclude on anything when you're tired. So it's like you go yeah. to sleep and you get up and you be refreshed, and then you observe it freshly, and you're like, okay, now let's really look at this. Okay, now what I didn't get last night, what 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 are you going to give me today? You know, but um. I think it was it was it was cool. She said, "I've learned how to save myself." Now she's beginning the process of being free mm-hmm. for the first time in life. Mm-hmm. Now Keisha, um, I'm, I'm I'm looking for Keisha to be very modest now, business type. Oh yeah. You know, because tell you the truth, uh, her going to college the way she was, Keisha was in big trouble. Oh yeah, she really was gonna get turned out. Mm-hmm. 
But you remember, you, I was speaking in college, you remember her mom was telling her that because I guess uh, the scholarship people they gave, like, uh, they, you know, they were reneged on the deal because I guess they assumed she was dead or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely fell for her, you yeah. know, when her mom told her that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, now she doing kind of like what they were saying in the previous, previous episodes about how in Chicago people feel stuck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, when I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was like, man, I got to ask you about that. I know you, that's not the case for you, but since you're from there, it, do you say that that's a lot of truth or yeah. whatever, that line? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And and see, what what makes a a population feel stuck is a very weak economy. You know, and this is what um this is how I feel out here. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know how people say they probably never even been out of Georgia. Well, they probably never been able to afford to leave Georgia. They probably yeah. never been able to afford to leave Chicago. Nope. Nobody wants to stay where the, where where they are, and you know I I think only a very um, crazy person would want to live on a big old planet like this and not have an interest of leaving where they were raised at. Oh, this is all I know. Chicago's all I know. Well, aren't you interested in? Going at least outside the state to like Indiana, nigga. Can can, right. can can you go to Indiana or Ohio? You know. You know, it's some some people are just not. Um, it's it's the economy. The economy makes people feel like that. You know, and this is why she was saying, "I'd be glad when I go to college," and that's why she she responded like that. And even the homeless guy says, well, you know, Chicago has a way of making you feel stuck. Yeah, I can imagine, especially coming from a homeless guy. Right. But, you know, I've heard that many times with people, you know, who, you know, uh, who there are what they say is like that. You know, I know you haven't been there 32 years, but I know you still got some type of perspective. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've, 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 I look at all of the people who I grew up with. I know a lot of them are dead from what you tell me. A lot of, uh, a lot of them are dead and, and, and the ones who are alive it's less than a handful of them that no no longer live there and, and the ones that no longer live there are in Las Vegas. Well but you know that you know, Trisha chick, don't she live out here in Texas? Yeah, Patricia lives in Texas. But see Patricia is an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, I think she lives in my city, Dallas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she she lived right out there with you. Yeah, I'm surprised. I, I you know if you ever do come out here, man, you gotta be up there to her. Oh yeah, yeah. Me 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 and her talk about that all the time. Cause see, what it is with her when she went to Texas. I don't I don't know everything entirely, but once you get a business, and then you get the business going. You know, it's like starting starting an engine. You know, you turn the engine on and you feed and you nourish the engine to the point to where the engine is taking care of itself. Only then you are an entrepreneur, you know, because you got product going out, you got revenue coming in, product going out, revenue coming in. That's that's the that's that's the that's the running engine. You know, but like I was telling you out here. This this madness that Salam had going on, you know, these little contracting business. Not only her, but people like like her, her lover, um, Mr. Crutcher, and and all of these people. They just do these little side jobs just just to keep going, and yet and still they have a business. No, you don't have a business because you don't have an influx of revenue coming in consistently. You know, you have a broken engine. Sometimes it runs, and most of the time it breaks down. And when it's like that, you don't prosper. Right. You know. But but people say, well, why are you trying to get to Las Vegas and 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 and, and be all up under them? You know, in the gaming field. You want to know why? Because the people who created those engines out there are paying. And they're, they're, they're paying enough money to where if you utilize that money, 
you know, um, effectively, you can actually get something going. Right. For yourself. I just, in particular, um, just want to be a full-time writer. And don't ever give up on that desire either. No, mm-mm. I mean that's 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 what I am. That's what I am. I mean I'm I'm still young, and you know, yeah, yeah. I was pretty young still. Yeah, and I don't I don't say that out of denial. It's just I ain't nothing but fifty six. Fifty six, you know, I still got a good uh, thirty forty years on me. I still got a lifetime ahead of me. You know, it it just it it took all of this for me to totally die to the whole relationship, wanting to settle down and get married and stuff. I'm totally dead to that. Yeah, so long killed that in you. Yeah, she sure did. I'm grateful too. Well, he had three, you understand? Uh huh. Yeah, but um. I like what she said, though, Keisha, when she said, I've learned how to save myself. That's letting these niggas know you are your own savior. You have to save yourself. Yeah. Yeah, but the stepmom, she, she, she's too much for me. She's always in her face, always in her face, you know. Get a woman some space. Why don't you leave folks alone? Leave people alone. Can this woman deal with her kids without you being somewhere in the picture, just standing there with your eye, eyeballs all big? And you know, she she's always there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's real aggravating. I know. Mm-hmm. I just wish some of my straight friends would have told me that um, this marriage life is. As difficult as it is, uh, of course it's difficult because you 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 feel like you got to be all up under somebody all the damn time. That's what that's why I've decided I'm never getting married. I'm I'm gonna come and go as I please. Right. I do know one thing. Um, if if um, the last two episodes is just strictly focused on them. I won't be coming back right you know because that's a little bit you know and then this this homeless dude going to church okay big deal so what you know what I'm saying right you know give give us something to look at I mean come on you know it's it's, it's, it's almost like the ideas of, are, are, are becoming less than lame to the point to where when people are watching it they're going to be like okay so what you know and then ratings are going to go down Mm-mm, that ain't good. Mm-mm. Because I'm 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 not impressed by this. I mean, who who cares? Is is, is this girl going to find out? Who cares? You know. Right. You know, but um, when the homeless guy, man, I'm a, tr- I wish I wish I was a um a part of a um dialogue. Right. Thing. Yeah. Because I would have had him tell her. You know, there's a measurement of time when it comes to healing. You're hurting right now. Of course, I, I say all the time, you're hurting right now because you're healing. So you're supposed to hurt because you're healing. And as time goes on, you hurt less because you're healing more. You know, you 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 have to make it extremely Plain to them to where they absolutely get it and 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 when they get it and when they they are taught that each day each moment actually is is a part of the healing process and each day and and moment the pain gets less and less and less and less and that's why you have to be very careful who you talk to because yep. taking her to, to see a psychologist, that's not going to help her. That's going to harm her. You're right. You know, that's why when whenever I'm going through something, I don't talk to people. 
you know, is 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 very very few people who I talk to. You know, I don't I don't talk to people who think they know. You know. Yeah, that's one thing I have to pet peeve of mine in the year in the past fifty years of people who think they got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they don't. You know, and you know, people who who already think they know are really not listening to you. Nope, they already got a preconceived answer before you gave open your mouth. They already got the answer. Yeah, and that's that's if you can get a word in. Right. You know, that's why I I, I say again, that's why I like talking to Stephen because Stephen listens to you. You know, and um, Stephen has this thing to where you say something. And he sits there and he looks at you and then he nods his head. And then you nod yours and then he talks. You know, you go back and forth like that. You know, he's letting you know, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. Right. You know, and then he talks. You know. But um, like I say, the majority of, of the people I hear, they don't know how to have a conversation. And when you're dealing with a person who's walking a certain destiny, you just can't take them to just just talk to anybody. Right. You know, and and after what she's been through and considering her coming out as strong and aware as she is, I know this. She's just an actress. You know, this this is all acting and, and everything. But there are people like this. Right. You know, because when I had my accident, um. My, my dad was amazed at how loosely I was talking about it. You know, I'm like, yeah, dad, I would have called you uh, uh, about three weeks ago, but I was in the hospital. I had this accident, but I died for a few minutes. He's like, wait, 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 slow down. What? What? You you broke what? You died? You what? what? Man, uh, all of that? Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. See, those, those, those are people with a destiny. You know, uh, the things pe- people who have a destiny, things don't affect them as intense as it affects other, uh, you know, other people. Right. You know, they they carry a strength within them. A whole lot of people think is um, abnormal, and and that abnormality, most people look at that. You know, most people perceive that as a uh, um, insanity, or there's there there there's something wrong with you. You know, and that's right. that's understandable. You know, but don't strictly con- conclude on that. You know, you just need to get those person, you know, those people their their space. You know, but it is going to be a um, a trial for her to get herself together. Oh yeah, it's going to take some time. That's you know, for sure. In order for her to uh, be comfortable as far as where her life is. And you know she she's not real um, um, touchy, you know anti touchy feely. You know I was I was glad now at at, at the um, the beginning of the episode she had um, showed that towards her mother. You know when her mother tried to hug her, you know and she jerked, you know away from her mother. I'm like oh lord now I I hope they don't make her like this. You know. But as as time went on, I, I noticed that they they had most likely wrote that out of of her character, considering when Emmett and her was was laying on her bed talking and laughing, and I said, okay, cool, you know, it's it's not like she don't want men around her, or and then she took Emmett's hand and she she led him in there, and I'm like, okay, cool. So, also, I don't know if 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 you noticed it. But they didn't really show that she got violated by the dude. Yeah, I, I, I actually remember they were saying that, um, you know, they, they were saying that in the episode where, like, the brothers, well, they don't know if she got raped. I don't think she did. I, 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 it was just one of the weird situations. Mm-hmm. I don't know what was going on because they didn't show it. No. You know, and it, they really didn't even imply it. It was like he was just some weird creep. Mm-hmm. And even when she was in the bed with him, when she got up, she she wasn't nude or anything. Yeah. 
And people say, well, they probably didn't want to show the, you know, her naked body. Excuse me. Did you see the earlier episodes of, of Shop when she's running around the little panty showing her breast? Right. Okay. So that actress, she don't care nothing about showing her body, especially now that she didn't got her implants. Right. You know, in real life, uh, she's 28 years old. I looked her up. I was like, dang. Mm. She looks her age. She's younger than that, huh? She, she, um, no, I can't say she looks her age. She, she looks like she's about 15 or 16 years old. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I was like, that was shocking me or whatever. She look young. Mm-hmm. You know, but this is a black woman we're talking about, too. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, you know, black women barely age. You know, especially the ones that, that really take care of themselves. You know, but um, I am glad that she didn't totally conclude on what her mother said. when she, she, she really took responsibility for why that happened to her. Right. Because you remember when we were talking about how she would dress the way she dressed and she's on the south side of Chicago and she's just walking down the street like, ain't, ain't nobody going to touch me. You know, she she was Miss Miss Thang. Yeah, Miss Thang. You know, Miss Invincible. You know, Mm-mm. you can get touched just like anybody else. 